or be a nerd, but switch to 24 hour time. All right, so going on to tables, um, we've done some of this already, um, but we'll do some, hopefully some new stuff. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a cooler demo. I have entirely lost my window, however. I have a lot of windows open. All right, move that one? Yes. All right. I just have to find else. Ah. All right. Is that big enough? Yeah? Cool. All right. So now I can just go to presentation mode instead of having to fuck with uh, Zooms. Um, all right. So what we're doing today, uh, if I click correctly, um, let me just load that, uh, as you all know. Um, but what we want to do is, uh, so far, we've been loading tables. Um, and can anybody tell me how we've been loading those tables from files? What are those files called? CSV? Yeah, uh, so comma-separated values. Uh, to be distinguished between tab-separated, uh, which is usually a bad idea, um, but is also common. Uh, so, but you almost never see a TSV file, even though uh, that would stand the reason. Um, all right, so these are some landmarks around campus. Um, hopefully, you all know where they are. Uh, if you don't, you should definitely check out Pavement, uh, because coffee. So, so what are we doing right here? We're just making an array, right? Um, and so, now what we want to do is actually make that into a table. But conveniently enough, as you may recall, um, what we can do is we can actually not load something and just say, you know what, I want a table, okay? This table isn't very exciting because it doesn't have anything in it. Um, but we can do things that are cooler by using the array we just created and doing something like this. Um, let me see, I just want to check and see. Yeah, okay. So you could do something like this and then, and do we have, yeah, later, okay. Uh, so the exercise, so if you, oh, sorry, actually let me mention this again now that everybody's here. Uh, if you didn't see the Piazza note that said launched, launch a Jupyter instance, uh, please do it now and also copy over the files. If you look at Piazza, you will see um, the, uh, the directions there uh, because we're gonna try to do some of it live today for you to be able to actually participate. Um, and then hopefully going forward, we're gonna be able to do it for most of the classes, okay? Uh, so that you can kind of do it at the same time. Um, or what I really wanna do here is I wanna let you experiment with stuff before I ask you to answer a question so you can see if it's gonna work before you actually offer it up. Um, Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take that array that I made a minute ago, I'm gonna make a new table, okay? And so this empty paren thing here means what you're doing is calling a method here, but it's a particular kind of method, okay? Which is a create, all right? So it doesn't have to be empty, but it often is because you just wanna create an empty table, okay? Then we're gonna say with column, okay? So we're gonna add a column and we're gonna call that landmarks. All right, so we're going to call it landmark. And this is a weird distinction when you see tables. When you think about an array, it's usually referred to as landmarks, right, as the plural. But when you talk about a column, you usually call it landmark, singular. Um, and the reason is because a column is a label, right? Whereas landmarks there is a thing. So as a thing, it's a set of landmarks, right? But as a label for a column, it's not really the landmarks itself. It's like a label that says landmark, landmark, landmark. Does that make sense? So that's why that's when when you don't use the S or whatever other pluralization technique. Um, so just gonna execute that. And now we have a much more interesting table with actually some landmarks in it. Um, and then let's say we want to start to maybe uh, lay out of the campus, right? So um, does everyone here know where uh, Marsh Plaza is? All right, anybody point at Marsh Plaza from here? That way, yeah, 
All right. Um, okay, so what we're going to say is like distance from Marsh Plaza, where I'm kind of arguing that Marsh Plaza is kind of the center of campus. Um, BU is kind of weird, right? Because it's basically one big long line. Um, so a center is a little bit odd, but let's just say it's Marsh Plaza. Uh, and so we're going to add a column and we're going to say, uh, I'm going to execute it in the correct window. That would be a good start. Um, Well, actually, let me make a quick comment on here. Um, so can anybody theorize another way I could have written this statement such that I wouldn't need that one? I can't see anybody because of the light. Any ideas? All right, so you can bury a, like uh, method calls inside other method calls. So what we could do is actually just put that make array statement right here, okay? Generally, generally speaking, that's kind of considered bad form. Um, and the reason is, is because, I'll show you. Because it starts getting unreadable, right? When it does start to get unreadable, a lot of people will put in it's called a hard return or enter on your keyboard. Um, and that way you can kind of separate it out so it gets a little bit more readable, but it usually is a better idea just to have another line so that it's more explicit what's going on. Plus it actually makes it a little easier to add another landmark, say. Go ahead. Um, would you like us to like, copy this down from the beginning where it says the landmarks or do you want us to do a different exercise? Oh, we're going to do the exercise later. So you can, if you want to play with this, feel free. Um, it's not going to hurt. As long as you just run those first two lines, I think it's in there. Um, you know, that'll kind of set it up and it's not going to hurt anything. So feel free to follow along. Um, and like I said, what I want to encourage you to do, you know, today, if you like, or kind of starting next class, um, you know, I'm going to try to give you like a blank template similar to this one so that you can kind of follow along at the same time and actually execute the things we're doing. Uh, just make it a little a little bit more uh, consumable. Um, so I think, at least for me at least, uh, particularly learning things about anything related to programming, um, my fingers on the keyboard is the only way I learn it. So, uh, and as I've said in classes before, practice, 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 right? You know, just like your piano, practice, practice, practice. So moving on from there, and sorry for that little sidebar, I was supposed to say it at the same time. Um, Let's go back and add our blocks from Marsh Plaza, but unless somebody wants to go for a walk, I don't actually know how many blocks there are, so we're going to totally cheat. Um, and can anybody tell me what we're going to fill in the blocks from Marsh Plaza with? Any guesses? So you remember from last time, what does NP arrange do, or A range? It was only last, it was like Tuesday. Go ahead. Right, so that's gonna say, um, we're just gonna arbitrarily say that Questrom is zero blocks from Arch Plaza, the Photonics Lab is one, et cetera. Um, if somebody wants to go do the exercise to find out how far it actually is, um, you can let me know, uh, and then I will ignore it anyway. Um, but now, if we print campus, obviously do we know what's going on there, what's wrong? Exactly. We didn't overwrite what was there. So, so let's, let's do that, which obviously shows nothing. And then now we have it actually integrated into our uh, dealio. Um, then I want to show a couple other little functions. So sometimes um, when you when you have like a data set or whatever, uh, like. You may not, like if you're exploring the data, uh, which is kind of what we've been doing mostly, um, but 
you know, or you want to operate on the data, but you're not 100% sure what the columns are, um, like the names. So you can do something like you can do campus.labels, which will basically pull that top row out. So you can do one of two things there, right? One, you can just print it and it reminds you of what you actually have in there or if you're exploring the data. But the other thing you can do is actually, once we get to loops, you can start to loop across that based on um, you know, what's there and that way you can find it a little more easily. Um, and then you can do a couple other handy things. Um, and so that's the number of columns, right? So shortened to num. Um, and then we can also intuitively enough do number of rows. Um, and so there's just a couple of things to know about like what you can do to a table and make it like, a little easier when you're trying to discover stuff. Another one I would show you is, um, you know, a lot of the time, uh, like having a, a column name that has multiple words in it can be harder to operate with. So sometimes you want to change it either temporarily or permanently. Um, and we can do something like campus.relabel. It might be relabeled. Uh, I might be typing this wrong, so hopefully I am. Um, then you do it by position. So let's say we want to change blocks from Marsh Plaza to be just blocks. What position would that be? So I don't put blocks from Marsh Plaza in this first parameter. I put the position of the column. One. One, correct. Right? And then I would say blocks. And then assuming I take this correctly. There you go. So now I've just renamed it, but I didn't store it. So it's just the temporary thing. But so, you know, maybe I want to do some operation and it's simpler for me. Uh, to use just kind of a single word for the column name. So just kind of some handy things. Um, we are going to use a couple of them, I think, a little later. Uh, but, you know, kind of in general, they're, they're more on the FYI side. Um, so now we go back to the slides in theory. Um, so we've done the first one a bunch. You may not have noticed. But we've done a bunch of the read table. If you have that notebook open right now, you have one right there, right? Um, and so that's how you do it. You give it the name of whatever you're looking for. Um, and then you also can just do table, which will just give you an empty one. And then you can load individual pieces into it. The way you load things into it is by using arrays, right? Um, and then you, you know, these are all uh, things we've already done. And so if we want to pull out just the part of the table, we use select, right? And we can store that in a new table or we can, you know, just throw it away. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Um, and add an item. All right, make sense so far? All right, cool. Um, so today we're going to talk about a guy named W.E.B. Dubois. Um, anybody ever heard of him? All right. Uh, if you have not, he is uh, super famous um, and a really cool guy, um, at least in the U.S. Um, so, scholar, historian, activist, and data scientist. Uh, have you ever heard of, anybody ever heard of the N NAACP? All right, can anybody say what it is? Not necessarily the expansion, but what, what kind of organization it is. We don't really use one of the words in the expansion much anymore. No, you don't know what the org does. Um, they basically uh, are act, uh, like an activist group on behalf of uh, people, primarily black people uh, in the US. Um, and, uh, you know, so they, they're an advocacy group. They do lots of good stuff, uh, you know. And, uh, and so he founded that because a large part of his um, kind of life's work was advocating for black people in the US. Um, during that time frame, right, um, not well treated particularly at all. Um, we have some problems with that today, uh, but it is slightly less bad than it used to be. Um, but so one of the things that's so brilliant about him for data science stuff is that he kind of came up with these ways to try to visualize the experience of people, but particularly black people, uh, in um, using kind of data science and then visualizations is what we call it, but basically pictures of data, okay? Um, and so has anybody ever used a visualizer on uh, like music when you're playing like a, you know, when you're playing the radio or audio or something? 
Uh, so those are always fun. Um, but there's lots of visualizers. Basically, it shows you the, the graphic of the music. Um, but so he did uh, all these really cool graphs, all of them handmade, right? No computers. Um, and he made them all in three months. Okay. So what we're going to do is talk about one of the things he did. So this is one of them. Um, I know it is ridiculously difficult to read, so I blew off some pieces, so I'll show you those bits in a minute. Um, so I just think it's really cool. But so this is, as you can tell, right, this is all hand drawn, right? Uh, so like if I could ever write that well, I would be impressed with myself. Like I like yeah, on my best day, I, I don't have that good handwriting. So just kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, what you may not be able to see is up in the top bar there under, uh, so there's the title and then there's that box. Uh, but each of those sections, it's telling you what these colors mean, okay? So rent, food, clothes, taxes, other, okay? So rent, food, clothes, taxes, other. And this is the percent they spend of their money on those things. Okay, and other is what we refer to often as like discretionary spending. So like going to the movies, going out to dinner, um, that kind of stuff. So things that are not necessary kind of for life, they're just things that you like to do. So, um, so let me just show you that. And then I wanted to blow up the left side too. So he labels this column on the left here as class, which is a very unusual word for us in modern English. Um, but really what he means is like groups of income amounts, okay? So those people, and ooh, now I can't remember, I think, it, I think it's monthly. Um, but so they make between $100 and $200, uh, oh, now I can't remember if it's monthly or annually. But, uh, and then the average of what they make is, whatever that says, 139 maybe, 138.10, um, uh, and ad infinitum, okay? So, uh, you know, so this group, 750 to 1,000. Um, and going back to the discussion, we were talking about mean the other day, uh, like averages. Um, do you remember, do y'all remember uh, median versus mean? So this is one of those good examples of where median and mean are, are different. Um, and it's kind of an important difference. So this 880, right? That's, you know, that's kind of on the high side for the average, right? That's pretty, they tend towards the upper range, right? Um, whereas this one is kind of interesting because it's actually tends very low range considering it's thousand and over, right? Um, but kind of paying attention to how solidly these groups are falling or these uh, averages are falling into the group also tells you a little bit about the class as well. Um, so going back to this graphic, um, so does what I want to ask here is take a look at the picture. Give me some conclusions. What are some interesting things that you see here? Um, and I'll remind you, so the classes over here are basically the, the poorest people uh, to the richest people. And then we have the colors, which are uh, rent, food, uh, cl clothes, uh, taxes, and, uh, you know, uh, other, or, you know, discretionary spending, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's it kind of, um, you know, this bracket here is pretty rough, right? This is 8%, um, you know, oh, I was but. I looking at the wrong one. I was looking at close. Oh, okay. But so, but you're, you're kind of, I mean, this is 4.5%, right? And this is 5.5, but so it's it's interesting, right? Like, I would expect this, if this is 8%, that's 5%. And, you know, I would kind of expect them to be going up linearly, sort of. Um, you know, or it's a flat-ish tax, which is referred to as a regressive tax. I don't know if any of you take economics, you'll learn all about this. Um, but interesting, right? What else? Yeah. That's a great one. So uh, if you notice, these two don't have any of the black at all, right? Because they probably bought a house or inherited one. So they don't have to pay rent. So that gives you a whole bunch of your money back, right? Uh, when you don't have to pay rent. Uh, I would like to, well, actually I pay a mortgage, which is similar, but it's not quite the same. Um, all right, any other observations here? Yeah. 
Any ideas? So uh, I would say, you know, um, those were kind of some of the ones I was looking for. Um, you know, I would just point out, like, look at what percentage of discretionary spending this is, right? That's a lot of discretionary money. And don't forget that doesn't necessarily mean they spend it, okay? It just means this is how much they have left over. Yeah? Right. Potentially, right? Um, you know, again, economic sociology class. We could have that debate all day. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue that today. Um, but yeah. So if you have more discretionary money, does that mean you can put more into? And up there in the top, they say education um, savings. I would say is in a similar class, right? So discretionary spending, the things that kind of ultimately make you and your family potentially more successful or have a stronger position. Um, you know, if you're not able to spend that money, does that mean you're not actually going to be able to get ahead or whatever? So interesting points. Um, but like what I think is so amazing is, you know, uh, when was the Paris Exposition? Uh, 1910? I don't know. But like, that's impressive, right? <laughs> um, and then over here, just kind of FYI, um, he also categorizes those top two groups as poor, this group as fair. And then this group is comfortable and this group uh, well to do uh, just by way of exploring the data a little more. And the reason is, it's because now is when we're going to ask you to look at the Jupyter Notebook. So what I would like you to do, if you can, if you're comfortable, this is where COVID comes in and is a pain, is pair up with somebody nearby um, and try to work out this answer. Okay. And you should be able to use the notebook that's right there. It has the data, so you might want to explore the data a little bit. Let's see if I want to. Yeah, I'll put the data. Well, yeah. So, so you might need to explore it a little bit, take a look at it, but definitely pair up if you can, uh, if you're comfortable, um, because one thing that you will learn about doing this kind of work is that uh, most of the time collaboration makes it a lot easier. All right, so we'll give you a couple minutes to try to figure that out. And just to be mean, I'll probably actually call on individuals. So make sure you're putting something together so you know the answer. Oh, 
don't copy it over. Is that in your directory? Or is it Has anybody got any answers? Raise your hand if you think you have an answer. I won't call on you, at least not yet. So, I got, I got one of the questions that was like a leader for me. So, um, what method do you immediately think of to try to get to um, the highest percentage of something? And you had an answer. So, what was your answer? Um, so, when I first presented to people, we realized that the network was already in percentage. Yep. So, the highest, highest percentage. Okay, so max seems like an appropriate answer to try to use for this scenario. Problem is, max takes uh, basically two values and returns the result. It does not work on a call. Okay, so good guess, wrong path. So if, if anybody else is trying to use max to do it, it's not going to work. So try something else. All right, and I will remind you there's a couple of uh, couple of methods that might come in handy. One is sort, one is where, right? One is select. Next time I need to play ringers. All right, has anybody made better luck? Didn't think you were going to be live coding in here, did you? So, has anybody gotten it? All right, so let's pause. We'll talk some more about this table. All right, maybe that'll give you some more hints. And then we'll come back to this in a few minutes. Does that work? Will anybody be able to pay attention and not look at what they're playing around with right now? All right, because I know I would be very tempted. So, but let's hold on for a second. We'll pull you with some other stuff and see if that starts to give you some hints about how to solve this problem. Oops. I probably should have prepped this first so you wouldn't have to watch me use, but you know. All right, so you all have this. this. 
And so, so you all see this table. table. So this is basically it's a tabulized, you know, like, like a tableified version of this. One thing I wanted to actually show you real quick, because um, we talked about CSPs and I never really got to show you a good way, um, like what a, what a kind of SC, S, uh, a CSV looks like. Um, and sorry, I got a log in. Definitely should have prepped it more before I uh, started talking. All right, so hopefully we won't have to see terminals in here too much, but I thought this was useful. Um, oh, I thought it would show up at the top. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So everybody can read that, right? Um, so this is an actual CSV. This is what it actually looks like, uh, the actual file. So I just wanted you to see how the first row is the headers, right, the columns, um, and then kind of each of the data elements in each one, just separated by a comma. Um, one thing you might think of, right, is what if there's a comma in the content, right? What you do then is you put quotes around the individual item uh, so that the comma is ignored unless it's on the outside of the quotes. Um, it's often actually good practice, particularly if there's strings or data like this, right, is a string. It's not actually a number in a sense, even though it has numbers. Um, you don't want to treat this as 750 minus 1000. You want to treat it as a range, right? So really it's a string, not a number. So I would actually put quotes around that anyway, just to make it clear that that's the, the way you should be operating with it. Whereas these numbers over here, these are actual numbers. So I'd leave them alone. Um, but yeah, so does that make sense? Basically, I just wanted to kind of show you one just to, by way of example. So this is literally the one you're loading with the Dubois uh, data set. Uh, and if I can grab the right thing here. I'll pull that back over here. Um, all right. so. The first thing we do, right, when we're trying to solve this kind of problem is just try to look at the data. If, you know, if there's 10,000 rows, right, you don't want to look at all 10,000, but you want to look, you want to try to find some sort of representative sample, right? So usually looking at the first 10, 15, 20, at least gives you an idea of what's going on and the column headers, right? So here we have this class, we have the actual average the rent percent, the food percent, the clothes, taxes, other, and then status, right? And this status field, um, I don't know if that came from the picture or something else, but like it's kind of a weird column name for me, but um, that's, the, that's the kind of class, right? So the poor, fair, or comfortable, whatever. So the first thing we can do is sorry. So yeah, so we can start to manipulate this thing by looking at, let's say, status. Oops. Okay, so we can get that back actually directly as an array. Okay, so that kind of tells us one thing. We now can operate against that as an array um, because we can use it as an array. Um, then let's take a look at that actual average. Oops. Cool. Right, and we can kind of do the same thing. We kind of do it with any of the fields, um, and then. So what what do you think? Does anybody have any ideas about where to start with looking at this data to try to get to the question that we had before? We can sort by rent first. So the question was to find out what's. Who, which group spends the highest 
percent of their income on rent, right? Which it's is a slightly different question, question than how much they spend on rent. Like, like who, who spends, spends the, the most money, money on rent, rent right? right. Um, sorry, sorry, so, so who, who said, said that? that? You can you can sort? Sort? Okay. Um, Okay. All, right. All right. Do you want to tell me how we can do that? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, block sort and then you do something like you Oh, okay. Like that? Okay, so from this we see the highest percentage of rent is down here, 0 0.23, right? Yeah, but you want to make it like uh, the other way, so you write like um, and yeah. it has to be true. Correct. So we actually want to sort it the opposite direction. So we do this, right? And so now the first row is 23. Now, the problem is, what if we only want this row? Okay, can you tell me exactly how to do that? Sorry, this? There we go, okay? So you see, all you have to do to kind of solve these problem, kinds of problems, first, frame the problem, going back all the way back to the first class, Frame the problem, put your data set, then uh, kind of combine the various pieces till you get to the, the answer you want, right? Um, and let's see, there was a couple of things I want to talk about with this. Let me just see what, yeah, wait. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about this column. Now, let's say what we want to do is know, here's kind of another question. What if we want to know how much people are actually, like the amount of dollars people in this, you know, set are spending on food? What would we do? Any ideas? So let's back up a little bit. Um, let's say for any given row, how would we, what's, like, how would we figure that out? Just like in math or whatever. Does that make, can anybody answer that? Do you have an answer? So hold on on that for a minute. How would we just calculate the actual dollar spent by this class, right? Three or 400 in the four fair group. How would we know how much they spend on food? From just a pure like math perspective. Right, so you would just take that food number, right? And multiply it by the actual average, right? And that's how much on average this group spends on food. Does that make sense? All right, so then what do we know about tables and arrays or whatever um, that we can do to get that answer, but to kind of do it all at once. And I mentioned this earlier today. Do, do what between them? Sorry? Multiply. Multiply, yes. Right, so what we can do is we can say, Dubois, um, and then actual average times food. Oops, I forgot to call. Sorry. That's why live demos are terrible. And why I usually use a cheat sheet. All right. So what I can do is I can just remember we can multiply if they're the same size, 
we can just multiply two arrays against each other and they're going to actually multiply the individual pieces okay um so but that's like yes it gives us the right answer but it's not very readable right so what might we want to do um to make it a little bit more consumable like, like from a visualization any ideas, ideas? All right, how about we go back to what we were doing earlier in the class, which is let's add, well, actually, before that, let's assign this a name. Okay, we'll call it food dollars so that I'm less likely to make mistakes. All right, and so now we've assigned it a name. What can we do with that name? Any ideas going once? Yeah. We could add it to the table. Exactly. So we can say Dubois. Dubois. Sorry, I keep mispronouncing it. Um, with column. Oh my goodness. This is why I copy and paste a lot. Um, we can say food dollars and then food. Of course, you're not going to type food. So now we just added it right into the table. Now we have nice little labels and all that jazz. So we have a column label and we know what classes it goes with, et cetera, et cetera, right? One of the things we don't know up there is necessarily when we just print it directly, we don't necessarily know which uh, row it actually goes with. We have a good guess, but no guarantee. So if we put it together, uh, that makes it better. Um, now, I think I've beat this dead horse like 67 times, but Going to try it again, see if anybody gets it. What's going to happen if I run that command? If y'all are following along, you can just test it too. It's a lot of typing. Any ideas? I'll give you a, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. What's going to happen when I run this command? Good thought, not correct. Uh, close, like you're on the right track, um, but it's worse than that. It's going to straight up error. If I can click on the right thing. Because it's not actually there, right? Because all I did was um, print it here. I didn't actually change the, the actual thing. Um, this is like part of the reason I, I beat this dead horse is it's a very, very common mistake. I make it, you'll make it, everybody makes it. Just keep it in mind when stupid stuff like that happens, look, you know, look and be like, oh, right, that's what I forgot. Um, so what we can do is we can just actually add it in um by doing that right we just reassign it and now it's actually there um and then one of the things we can also do uh from a convenience factor and and one of the things i want to kind of mention is like i'm kind of showing you broad stroke stuff there's a lot of other things you can do in most of these scenarios um and they're probably worth exploring if you want to do certain kinds of problems you'll hit some of them in the homework and some in the labs and you'll have to look it up or whatever but generally speaking it's like you want to know kind of the the gross ways of doing things, like gross, like broad. Um, and then you can kind of go look up the details when sometimes you're like, and this is one of those ones where I'm going to show you is like kind of unusual, handy. Oh, not that. Um, we did that already. But not necessarily something you need to remember. What you more remember is the kind of thing is like, oh, this thing is possible. I don't, why is copy paste not working for me? Um, Let's try it one more time. Uh, so that you then are reminded to actually go look it up. Okay. So this does kind of exactly what it looks like, which is it's actually going to add in that percent symbol. It's actually going to like make it a percent. Okay. 
Um, personally, I don't even know why this is something we talk about like in school or ever. Um, it's like just it's just a decimal, right? It's just part of one. Um, but you know, people like to see those percent signs, uh, so that'll put that percent sign on that particular column. You could do it for the rest of them too, obviously. Uh, but that's the kind of thing where like I'm never going to remember that, right? But I know I can reformat individual columns to make them look prettier. Maybe I can put a dollar sign in there, right? Or a percent sign. Um, and, and so I'll go look up how to do it for the individual case. Um, then, let's see. I think that's that. Uh, so let's talk about some other stuff. Um, so, yeah, so what I want to do is just kind of, sorry, I want to recap some of the things that I mentioned, which is, okay, so does everybody remember what an attribute is or a tribute, depending on where you learn to speak English? Do you remember what an attribute is? Yeah, so it's, it's basically a landmark has a name, right? Um, or it has a blocks from Marsh Plaza. Those are both attributes, okay? Um, attribute is one of those words where, depending on where you grew up, they're both correct on how you pronounce it. Um, so what I want to point out was something I kind of mentioned, which is that you want to, there's two kind of broad categories of attributes, right? Numerical and not numerical, essentially. Uh, we'll talk about that one in a second. Um, but if it comes from a numerical scale, then you know the, the numbers mean something as numbers, okay? Uh, and they have they have a relationship to each other. And when you think about columns, for example, you don't want to put in your blocks from campus. You don't want to measure that in terms of blocks and in terms of feet, and put both numbers in there, right? They should be the same kind of thing whenever you are filling a column, even if they're both numbers, even if they both represent distance. They should be the same kind of distance, right? Does that make sense? It just seems ludicrous why you'd want to do something else, but it happens. So keep in mind, you just want to make sure, and it gets trickier when the, when the differences are more subtle, um, but just keep in mind, you know, you want any given column to have the same type, type of thing in it. Um, so there's the numerical ones, which, um, you know, they're, they're easier to work with. Right? because you can compare them to other things more easily. Um, you know, so if you think about that class thing, so I would probably give those, um, and we'll talk about this more of the census data, I would probably give those numerical values of some kind because then you can compare them. Because there's no way to say 100 to 200 versus, I don't remember what the numbers were, but 300 to 500, like there's no way to say this is before or after that. There's no way to order them. There's no way to kind of say, you know, I want to I want to get the top half or the lower half, right? Because I can't compare those strings against each other. Um, but you do have the column of the actual average, which you could use in the same way, but comparing those strings is difficult, right? Um, so categorical, categorical. This is each value is from a fixed inventory. So this is kind of what I'm talking about here is that maybe instead of labeling those, putting values in those columns where the class was. Instead of saying, you know, 100, 200, 300, 500, instead maybe assign it a value. So 100 to 200 might be zero, right? And 300 to 500 might be, let's say, three. And then over 1,000 might be 10. So then they become ordered, okay? So if we look at a quick example, if I can do this quickly. Um, so maybe what we do is we could actually just say, blah, um, column, um, what is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, I do wrong. Okay, let this go. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I bet I'm colliding on the moon, maybe. Ooh. I think seven out of order, so I I'm very bad at all my order. It's just up my So yeah, so now thanks for that by the way. Uh, so now I can like much more easily kind of compare the rows to each other, right? Or sort them or think about them in terms of sorting. Um, even though the, these numbers don't really mean anything. They do because now they're associated with that row, right? So that's what we mean kind of by categorical. Um, so, so, yeah, they may or may not have an ordering. I showed you an example that has an order because we're, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, but really, you know, the, we have lower income and higher income, right? So they have an order, but they don't necessarily have to. And one of the examples we're going to talk about, right, is like gender. Right? There's no order there, but you might assign one, <laughs> you might assign one, one, and one, two, right? Um, because that way you have, like, you can just use them as numerics rather than having to carry around text like M or F or male or female or a whole bunch of other options, right? Um, you don't have to worry about explaining the short version or, like, do you have enough letters in there? You can instead just change it. The other thing that it lets you do is over time, let's say over time, theoretically, in our class table there, people's income goes up. But let's say you wanna be able to still classify them in the same way. Now that you just have those kind of like numeric representations for those positions or those rows, you can change the actual dollar values, right? You can shift the whole thing up by, let's say you just add a thousand to all of them because incomes have gone up. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. The downside is that now you have that column you have to kind of explain, right? Um, but usually what you do to explain it is you'll have another table or another CSV or somewhere else, like if you're using it in a spreadsheet, for example, I always have another tab in the spreadsheet that is all the lookup tables, they're called. And in programming, they traditionally are called a lookup table. So I'll probably use that term, um, but that's kind of what it means. It's just, you're gonna go look up what this thing means. Um, yeah, does that make sense to everybody? All right, uh, let's see. Oh, I have one other slide on it. Oh my goodness, I was just explaining it to you. Um, I forgot I had this slide. Um, so yeah, so specifically in the census, um, they use the number zero, one, and two, okay? Um, and they don't, like, you, you can't math them, right? They're, they just are the labels. Um, and let's see, we don't really talk about it here yet, but so, um, yeah. Uh, and like I said, very, very common, um, particularly in, in, like in large data sets um, where you're trying to minimize the amount of space the thing takes up. Uh, you try to get, you know, get rid of as much as you possibly can uh, and put it in backups or lookup tables so that you can make the actual file as small as you can. All right, so now we're going to talk about the census. Oh, I wasn't supposed to get out of the way. All right, does anybody know what the American census is? Come on. Y'all know what the census is, right? Okay, so what is it? It's the document that holds all the Yeah, so that's kind of specifically, but kind of more broadly, um, most countries do a census every so often, which is where they literally walk around and count noses, as it's referred to. Um, and so that you know how many people you have and you know how many people have, are where, okay? Um, and in the US, that is particularly important for two big reasons. Uh, one is that in the constitution, it says we will go around and count noses every so often. It doesn't actually say how often, that's set by law, um, but the reason it's so important is because the representation in government is uh, based on those numbers, okay? So currently that uh, operation is every 10 years. We actually just finished one. The data actually just got released, uh, I don't know, let's say three, six months ago. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to incorporate like present day data into this class, uh, maybe later in this semester. Um, 
but right now we're using some older data. Uh, but there's a lot of things that are based on that data. So things like funding for schools and I don't know, whatever, like uh, funding for roads and you know all different kinds of things. So they actually, there's an office of the US government that actually estimates it every year as well, okay? Uh, as you might imagine, they try to collect as much information there as humanly possible. Um, sorry, I just, I just got a notification on my phone about my next class. Like, why am I notifying myself now? Um, so, so yeah, so that's what the census is. Um, in that directory structure, if you copied it over recently, you should have a copy of the census. And so hopefully that'll help you uh, do some of the next questions. Um, but a couple of things in this data set, uh, because it's a pretty small amount of census data. Um, so a sex column is one is male, two is female, and zero is both, okay? So if you want the combination of the two, it's it's zero is the value here. And then, um, oh, sorry, I kind of went out of order. Um, actually, no, I just wrote this slide very badly. Uh, okay, so there's both the actual, like actual data is in one column, okay? And then there's projections for several different years, and those are called pop estimate or population estimate. Um, and then for the year is on the end, is tagged onto the end. Um, and then there's also age information, okay? And in this case, uh, 999, okay, which we don't know of anyone who's that old. Um, they use that to indicate the all, kind of like the zero for the sex. Make sense? Okay. Um, and I kind of already explained this, but why do they do this? Why do they use these weird mappings? What's What's the biggest driving reason you think with a massive data set like the census? Any ideas? All right, maybe I should bring coffee or something. I don't know. Y'all are uh, really sleepy today. Any ideas? Come on. I just said it a little bit ago. All right, component belt. Right, so so basically it's kind of like a summarization that's pre-calc for you. Um, that's, that is a very good answer. Um, another reason is um, basically for the mapping is so that uh, just minimize the size. There's that much less information in there if you don't have to put, um, you know, like the summary, like you don't have to say summary, you don't have to say both, you don't have to say M, you don't have to say F, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, a lot of the time when you're looking at data sets, there's going to be all kinds of shorthand. You can see it like population estimate, right? All kinds of shorthand, basically just to try to keep the size of the content that you're looking at down because they're already massive, right? So, you know, just kind of be aware of it, you know, know to go look it up. Uh, usually it's not too big a deal. And part of it is that if you're actually doing data science, let's say, against like the census population, you memorize all of that stuff very fast. Like whether you mean to or not, just kind of looking it up three, four times, you kind of get it. And so you don't need the information to be carried around all the time. Um, yeah, and so here's me kind of writing that out. Um, um, so th like this thing, generally speaking, if I'm designing a data set, I discourage, okay? Because it's too easy to make a mistake and what if you want to do, if you want to stretch that, if you want to do something slightly different? Well, you're out of room. You know, do you just start counting down from 999 and hope you don't run into a real age, right? What if all of a sudden people start living a lot longer? Um, you know, so I get really nervous when you bury a different kind of data in the same place as another kind of data. So going back to that other discussion, you really should, they should all be the same type of thing. Okay, this is pretty close. It's a pretty good sheet, right? But if you go back to the gender one, you already have a problem, right? Because we're starting to consider, at least in the US, right? We're starting to consider, you know, zero and, or sorry, one and two not being the complete set of genders, right? So 
Now what? <laughs> you know, do you, you know, is, do you just start adding numbers on the end? What does zero mean now, right? Um, because it's always been just people identifying as male and female. You can't compare apples to apples if you start including other, you know, other kind of gender components or ideas or whatever you want to call it um, in that number, right? But now you don't have any place to put this new number, which is the, you know, ad infinitum. You can imagine, like you said, I find it very dangerous. It is not uncommon, but I try to avoid it. Um, let's see. So we are not going to get quite as far as I wanted because what I wanted you to do was open the census data. So, you know, exercise for the reader. We have 10 more minutes, so hopefully maybe you could take a little bit of, of uh, a stab at it. Um, but so first thing to do, write a statement in your Jupyter notebook like right now, um, that will load that CSV file. And apologies on the name, I just kind of took the one that was there. Um, and uh, so can everybody try that, get that to print? All right. Then raise your hand briefly to indicate when you got it printing, so we know when to move on. You can throw something too, but I prefer you just raise your hand. Cool. If you have any trouble, you can also raise your hand. All right, if you get it, um, you know, feel free to start on a kind of real question there, which is how compare, basically what I want is a table that compares the total number of men, women, and the combination of the two between the real year, like the, the real census data and the estimated census data for, I think I said 2014, 2014. Um, All right, show of hands who loaded the data so far. All right, cool. See, now that y'all are starting to know how to do this stuff, I'm gonna make you do it. Quarter up, right? I don't know why I have this block. Pardon? I have a mental block. It's about this class and the next one. Mm. No, it <laughs> All right, has anybody actually gotten the result of the question? Not yet? All right, close. All right, any luck? It's very hard standing up here and, and not doing anything. I should bring like a book or something. You got it? Or you have a question? Oh, I wouldn't call it CSV file. That's just kind of a bad, I mean, just as a, like, wait a little, like population or something intuitive. But if I, but let's see it again. Right. Import pop table. Dot, yeah. Read table. Oh, it's there. It's dash, not s. Uh, maybe it's a copy. Yeah, it's not an underscore. It's, it's, it's a dash. So that should work. 
Right, so did we get it? Get it? Yeah, like, did you solve it? Oh, and okay. again, a dash instead of between each sentence. Let's try that. No, we just display it. Yeah, so just a table that's got all of this. Yeah. Um, all right, in the interest of time, anybody have, anybody help me get started? Yes, oh, and it's CSV, not CVS. Actually, let me grab this. All right, so you should have all earlier got, oh, actually, I think I can see this. Yeah. So you should have all gotten this far, right? Okay, so you got the data loaded. Um, so does anybody have any kind of theories about how you can get to just the stuff I want? Hopefully the question is great. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So it looked like that. You need to copy the file, and so I think you need to change that. That's correct. Okay, so obviously it would be you know maybe a little slicker, like exercise for the reader. We're almost done. Um, you know, making sure this age is sorted right uh, would be interesting. Um, but so here's our here's our actual census information from 2010, and then this is what the like I said the. I can't remember what it's, I think it's literally called the Office of the Census. Um, what they estimated the population would be in 2014. Um, this is super, or can be super interesting because like my neighborhood, for example, in Boston, this is, this estimate for 20, whenever we just did it, was 2020, I think, um, is wildly wrong. Like just wildly wrong because of how people are moving around the country. Um, so it can be a lot of fun to play around with. Um, let's see if we, Kind of. So the next thing I was just going to say was you could actually make these better column labels, right? And we can do. Does anybody know how to do that? Let's say we want to change this nastiness to something nicer. So we remember how to do that. Yep. And then what do I have to put in with the first parameter? No, so it's the position rather than the name, which I find kind of annoying. Um, so it's like two, right? Zero, one, two. Yep. Um, and then I would say, let's just call it pop. And then I can also, ooh, how about some, it's got to be a string. And then let's relabel the last one. Oh my goodness. Relabel. Um, three, and let's call that estimated 2014. And now I have nicer labels on those columns, although because I'm trying to do this fast, they're probably less nice, but you get the idea. Um, and then my only, I think, other question was the total number of people by age from 2010 to 2014. Does anybody know how we would try to get to that? So we want the totals now, not the break. So what we did originally, right, was we got the breakdown by age. What we want to know, or sorry, we did it by gender, right? Um, now we just want all of the people by any given age. Um, So we have any theories about how I can get to that? Oops. Right, so I think it's full where, um, is it like this? 
No, it's no, it, 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 well, it's age, you index the column, and so get rid of equals 199. What is the, yeah. Uh, one. And then you have to put a comma. Oh. Yeah. Is that like that? Oh. Uh, yeah. nope, no. uh, so age, just just no, get rid of 199. Yes. It, it, 199 has to be out of it, I believe, on the other side. So age, comma. Oh, that's what I was doing originally. I just didn't do it very well. Like that? Yeah, and then no, sh and then uh, r <laughs> dot equal to 199. That's what I was trying to remember. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. R, yeah, sorry. R, R dot equals underscore two. Yeah. No, I got it now. I just. Um, this is, I was thinking. Oh, oops. All right. So, not my best demo in the entire world. And then it might not be a string. Oh, yeah, it's a number. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> despite some massive fail on typing. Um, so yeah, so we can just pull out the individual row that we care about, right? Um, and then we want to know what the total population is. Um, this actually by um, all ages by gender, right? We could also do the reverse, which I can't remember which way I actually said it, but you can do it in either direction. You just have to look at different columns, right? Um, so let me not stumble around too much on it, um, you know, but we can also just do sex and zero, oops, and kind of get the reverse, right? So this is the all, all gender, one-year-olds, current population, or uh, census population rate, and then estimated populations. All right, so like I said, just some demos to kind of let you play around with it. I was going to show you some visualizations, um, but we are actually over time now. Uh, so we ran out of time, so we will do that next time. Any questions?